Hello, and welcome to a special retro edition of the Snackdown, sponsored by Walker's Crisps, which is why we call it the Snackdown, as in snack, not smack. Do you see? Uh, yes, we have a retro theme for today, which is why this month's podcast... You are allowed to sort of laugh, <laughs> guests. Don't don't hold it in. Uh, I mean, you don't have to, but... Uh, yes, uh, anyway, we have a retro theme for today, which is why this month's podcast is only available in black and white. Uh, and if you want the <laughs> vodcast version, please send us a stamped addressed envelope, and we'll send it back to you in video cassette form. Yes, stamped addressed envelope. That was a thing, kids. That really was. Uh, like video as well, which uh, by now, despite all the stuff that happened with the radio star, surely should have been released on parole. Uh, yes, even the jokes are retro, kids. <laughs> it, it, it was a song. It, never mind. Let's move on. I'm stupidly excited today because of my uh, lineup, the guests that have joined me. And first of all, uh, joining me is a woman with a mind so sharp you could carve your Sunday roast with it. And that's, uh, that's making me quite hungry now, actually. Uh, it's uh, wit, talk show host and presenter extraordinaire, Vanessa Feltz. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm glad to be on the retro show. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, nothing personal. No, there. I'm not taking it, but I'm a bit upset, but I'm yeah, pretending we didn't I'm go not. I'm covering it up. Yeah, yeah, we didn't go retro. No, we got some other, some young people as well. But, um, <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, what's it like being a guest? Because you're, you're used to being a host. Does that take the pressure off I you? I think it's fabulous. You get to worry and yeah. I don't have to worry. Yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> worried now. Um, uh, great. So, great to have you, Vanessa. Thank you. I'm also joined by one of the country's Finest young comedy actors, actresses, actors, I, I don't know, it's a minefield, and stand-ups, one of the stars of the brilliant Peep Show, uh, Izzy Sooty. Hello, Izzy. Hey. And sorry to introduce you as one of the stars of the Peep Show because you've done so much else, you're very versatile, etc. but I guess that's that happens, doesn't it? Yes, um, but I just want to make clear that in case there's anyone watching who doesn't know what Peep Show is, it is yes. an A Peep Show, which oh, is yes. what, <laughs> when I got the part, my parents were a bit like... Right. Not to explain it, it's okay. the way in which it's shot. Well, they were... Thank you for describing me as young as well. Yeah, I'm is sure that all right? Um, very, very all right, yes. But, but, you know, it's all relative, isn't it, as well? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that came out wrong. <laughs> no, no, I was like, you are young. <laughs> uh, you know, and, uh, and finally, making a triumphant return to the podcast. Well, let's see if it's triumphant. No pressure there, right. Adam. After a triumphant run in Edinburgh, we're very proud of him. Uh, it's a man who I still can't believe once decided to learn pi to 50 decimal places because what? he was no, born. 150, 150. 150 yeah, yeah, yeah. decimal places. Yeah, and it wasn't really because of boredom. I thought I need something. To I make you interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, then I forgot I'm... my PIN number. I'm not going to get home. <laughs> right. So how was Edinburgh, Adam? I, I mean, I saw I saw that you one of your jokes was the top ten, one of the top ten jokes. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. You don't seem very proud of that. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know who chose that list, but I, don't, I didn't find it that funny, my Wh joke. Which was the joke? Surely every car's a people carrier. Oh, yeah, that's good. I like that. That is good. Yeah. It's a bit it's weird seriously it's, funny. It's, Pardon? It's quite serious and funny. It's a clever joke. It's a. It's the it's most. It's a bit weird to be included because it is like it's not a thank set. It's true really and funny. Yeah. It's a damn good joke. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank yeah. you very yeah. much. Yeah, you should be proud of it. What's thank wrong you. With it? Don't be ashamed. Of it. I think it's just I've said it so many thousands of times now. To me, I've forgotten what like. Um, Cars are, people are. <laughs> I just it means nothing to me now. It's just. And once it once it was published as one of the top ten jokes, and you said, did you still say it in your set, or did that? Kill yeah. It? Um. And then I would say it with a knowing wink, knowing that some people in the audience knew that it was now my um my raison d'être, and uh, some people would groan or cheer. And then I just thought, oh, I hate these collection of words now. Right. Really, my parents phoned me up to um congratulate me on it being the, that uh, awarded. So that's that. good. Um. Yeah. But um. It's like they never congratulate me on anything else. They've never congratulated you on anything with what? It's, it's the oh, it's, and weirdly there was yeah it was the uh, thing that they seem to be most proud of in my life. My mum was always very honest with me. Like I was in the Sound of Music when I was about twelve, <gasps> and she said you were adequate. Oh Ooh. my god! She knew I wanted to be an actress, but then Ooh. but then I know when she is. Well, yeah. When she says it's good, something that she Captain means Trapp it. Would you say know. to a child as well, it's like something in fitting with the tone of the film. Yes, yeah. good. Well, we're all really, really <laughs> funny people. Clearly, um, but that does make, it does make me think that it'd be quite good to do posters for your show, but only reviews from relatives on it, and just oh, to yeah. see. Oh dear lord! Uh, so it's and a lot's been happening since our last podcast or vodcast. If you're watching on YouTube, the summer came to an end, and what a lovely two days it was. Uh, yes, it's all changed since I was young, and the summer days seem to stretch endlessly with sunshine every day. That said, I was brought up in the Mojave Desert. Um, but it's hard to believe. I, I got a bit nervous there because I wasn't sure whether that's how you pronounce it. But, uh, it sounded good to me. Yeah, it sounded it's got away with it. Um, but it's hard to believe the clocks will soon be going back. Yes, we've only about a month till the time when our oven clocks and in our cars is right again. 
The end of the summer also means <laughs> the end of the summer also meant the end of the school holidays with the air full of horror, screaming and tantrums. And that's just the teachers. I thank you all. Uh, out of sympathy for the back to schoolers, I'm wearing my brand new lace ups, a blazer two sizes too big and my older brother's trousers. I'm also slightly nervous that Vanessa will take away my lunch money. Um, we also had National Dog Day. For me, the best bit about the day is National Dog Day afternoon, where I spend two hours watching my favourite heist movie. <laughs> And finally, <laughs> thank you. and finally, there was a happy story this month about a toucan in Brazil who lost his beak and was given a 3D printed replacement. Uh, did you see did anyone read about that? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank that's you for... so cute. It is cute, isn't it? When asked to pay for it, he said, put it on my bill. Oh, yeah. oh, right. Not quite so cute oh, now, no. eh? But now it's time to see what we found on theinternet.com uh, in Inside the Packet. Um, uh, I do it in a slightly voiceover-y voice. Mm -hmm. so it's, so it's, yeah. That's all right, Vanessa. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Keeping up. I love it. Um, uh, and yeah, yeah, there was an interesting article about how men with... <laughs> there was an interesting article about how men with wider faces tend to be more successful. Is that something that you notice? I mean, my other half always says that successful actors and actresses have big faces that you uh, can tell who the star is because uh, they've just got a big old face and it just takes up more of the screen and soaks up more celluloid yeah. and you can just tell. Well, Since who do we know that's got that's very successful with a really big face? I'm trying to think whether Hello. that would be Hello! <laughs> oh, well, huge looking face you've got there. Yeah. No, I have got, I've got a big face. It's, it's a long face. Tilt, Tilt to be get successful. famous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it only men? Who, it if seems women be, have wide faces, they're unsuccessful. Yeah, it seems it seems to be men. Yeah, I don't know what what the square jaw and um, whether that applies. You should to. get a face extension then if you want. If for a job interview, just like get like build some extra face there, yeah. and then make sure you always head on maybe, with them. Maybe that's what bit. hamsters are doing all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Think, I've got I've a job interview. I've, I've got to. You've got to be uh, successful. I know that there's a thing where people say that you everyone judges someone else in the first three seconds of when they meet them. And then it's really hard to change that judgment, uh, which is why I say nothing for three seconds whenever <laughs> I meet <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> silent. And Give just money to everyone as you walk nothing in. at all. But don't you think those people who get the best break in life are those guys who lose their hair and have a fabulous head? You know, the skull just is good. Oh, yeah. So some people have a marvellous head for no hair. Some mm. people have a shocker of a head. <laughs> and then some people can, you know, lumpy and funny looking and discoloured. And what can you do? Yeah. Nothing you can do, is there? Except wear a hat, of course. Apparently so, the thing that leads to um, success isn't necessarily like um, an absolute level of intelligence it's the intelligence level you had relative to your peers so apparently right. uh, if you get into Harvard this is this book that I read if you get into Harvard it, you better not go into Harvard go to the other lower one you got into because the thing that defines success is like how well you did relative to your peers in your uni or whatever uh -huh. so if you if you get if you get if you are the cleverest one at a polytechnic, you'll do better than if you were just average at Harvard, apparently. Because right. you become more confident. Yeah, it's a conf so everything is a confidence thing. Thanks so for mentioning, very retro to mention polytechnic. <laughs> I know. I've been there for a while. Yeah, the Massachusetts Polytechnic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, apparently it's, uh, so it is a confidence thing, I think. But also, it? what is success? It isn't necessarily wealth alone, uh, is it? What? Uh, well, Guys. What is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to know. I was attempting to point that out. It's not just the money, is it? No. There's I think, it's how late you're allowed, I think it's how late you're allowed to get up in the morning. And you're oh, you're, excuse me, you're talking to someone. I have to be at work oh, every day. So four four thirty a.m. I've done that for nearly five years. Well, so you then could. I'm not at any kind you're of success. You're almost going. You could say you're going to bed late, or you're getting up late the previous yeah, day. You really can't. That's, yeah, no, that's really, that's really, really. I wish you could, but you just can't. You cannot say that now. Yeah, having having you know worked with some real Hollywood legends, like some big big A-listers, which I've done. I've done very small parts in films with very big um, A-listers, and and there is some. Something about their charisma, their sheer charisma, because there's this thing, you know, I won't name names, but um, where there's one actor that I've worked with, you're not allowed to look at them. Mm. Um, and is that true? Are you yeah, really not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought that was yeah. just a rumour. No, no, there's one actor that I work with uh, that uh, are the on the This is on like saying the Shakespeare play. Like, we all know who <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, well, no, no, it's not the person who everyone... Oh, oh really? Who, not? ...who I work with, who everyone thinks it is. No, it's someone else. Mm. I won't say who. Um, but uh, a person was sacked from the crew for looking at him on that day mm -hmm. uh, and um, what was the actual and, rule sorry what was so you, no one even if, if you're in a scene with him you know no, if you're in a scene that's allowed but you can't stare at him when you're on set 
Um, and and the, but so that sounds terrible. But to defend them. Mm. You just look at them the whole time. You really want to stare. You at them. just stare at them the whole time. So you know that. I, I mean, I'm and not. And why? So, because they're so gorgeous looking. I, I or because think, they're so compelling. I think what it's partially it? that thing of they're gorgeous looking, but yeah. it's also that you, oh, it's that that person off off the telly, off the cinema. I don't know, and I just wonder whether it's also charisma. But I'd like to put a different side of this because I I used to be aboard the Big Breakfast bed for a couple of years. Yes, in, you the, met in, the, some in, huge in the glory days of the Big Breakfast. So I'd be on the bed with some really big, massive Hollywood stars, just as you've worked with them. I, I'd be on the bed with them for just a few minutes and everything. And I was amazed by how nervous lots of them were and how extremely human and vulnerable and full of frailties they were. But there were also lots who, after a sort of eight-minute interview on the bed on the Big Breakfast, God knows what time in the morning, would say, was I OK? Was I all right? You know, was I... And mm. you'd think, blimey. You're, you know, you're, sauce, yeah. you're asking me if you're all right. <laughs> you know, you've just started in this huge blockbuster. You know, everyone loves you. You've know, been married eight times. You're worth, you know, 20 billion quid. What do you really want to know of whether I think you're all right? But they did want to know. Yeah. So, so I did think, you know, do they have this huge confidence and everything else, or are they really just just like everybody think, else? Yeah. Yeah. Nervous, and under massive pressure. Well, one sign of success, apparently, is at the moment the man bun. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the man bun. Definitely, bun's, am. So, so, definitely yes, am. Yeah. Sounds like you're a big fan. So it's it's huge a huge fan. A turn of hair. What would we say? A twist of hair. It's a magnificent hair. thing. It's kind of like a, like a curlicue of hair. Uh, oh, possibly round of applause secured. for curlicue. Thank That's certainly much. a first yeah, on you. this podcast. Um, and and possibly secured with a hair grip or two, or maybe a pencil, a casual pencil, or a chopstick, something oh, okay. like that. Just securing, securing the, the the circumference of it, and and it's I think it's a wonderful. Thing. But there's so much potential. So in that you quite it's like, like a coiled spring. So like the, like the cliched librarian, why Miss Jones? I didn't exactly realize. like the call me a cliched person. I am. But I with can't a bloke, help it. A bloke with a bloke, going, it's a fabulous, why fabulous Mr. Hipster, thing. Exactly. I, didn't really I mean, what's the worst hairdo you've had? Or you always have a? I always have a non hairdo. A non? Well, they're just a. Just hangs out like just, that. Yeah, just hangs yeah. down. Yeah. I don't really. I haven't really ever succumbed to the whole hairdo thing. Fashion disasters? Have you had terrible fashion disasters? I think my whole life has been a just hot and cold running fashion disaster. I asked everyone here to, to bring in and send us some pictures of uh, of your fashion faux pas. I'm, I'm just not see. very technology savvy. I don't have a scanner or anything. That's mine. <laughs> right. How would you describe that? Ooh. That that. <laughs> well, first of all, I've got a fur coat. We're all being sort of polite, aren't we? What is so... that, exactly? I've got a fur coat tied around my waist. <laughs> oh. We went to a nightclub. But I think we didn't have any money to use the cloakroom. Well, I was about, I don't know, 18 or 19. So I just tied the... Do right. for a coat around my waist. I'm also wearing a camouflage body. Do you remember? Yeah, bodies. bodies. They were very useful. Like in baby a way. grows, weren't they? Yeah. They, they yeah. stopped your shirt riding up, so could, they 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 poppered under your under your pants. Ooh. Okay. So. You know, you poppered them and then they stayed down, so they were tucked into your skirt. Or you, you yeah. Never, they would never ride up. They were, but then if you wanted to. You know, pay a call of nature, you're in real trouble. Yes. Well, well, what would you, you do? You had to you'd unpop to... them, and the whole thing was a right nightmare. You're reaching around to find the popper under your thing and yeah. asking a total stranger, sorry, excuse me, no, I don't know, could you just pop my thingy together? And it was all quite awkward, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's funny that you had to put it around your waist. I used to go, th I went through a phase of putting my jacket around my waist in nightclubs, and then I realised that in the toilet, there was like, the ceilings had raisable panels, mm -hmm. so I would just go into the toilet and hide my jacket in the ceiling. <laughs> uh, wow. um, and if I was wearing That's just so a very clever. light jacket, I would. Yeah, it'd, yeah, it'd be great. great There's a fun. whole show in going yes. around to nightclubs and looking in those panels and collecting what it is. It, it, yeah. all sorts of clothes. Yeah, that's um because because oh, part wow. of the I hated going to nightclubs because it was all about where's my stuff. I'd love dancing, mm. but it was all about. Well, it's worse if you've got stuff. bags. Now. When I was going into clubs, I'd have my filofax with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, hey, clubbing. No, so it's one thing to dance with your, you know, your handbag, but to dance with your filofax. <laughs> uh, so I, that had everything. That was like the equivalent of a phone, wasn't it? You had your whole life in a filofax. But is that something yeah. so your dance. cultural background? Because I know that if I ever came back from Saturday night out, my parents would always say, "Not did you have a good time, or did you cop off with anyone?" <laughs> What have you achieved? <laughs> <laughs> what was I meant to achieve? I was just, what was I doing? I was just dancing to Donna Summer. What do you mean? But what have you achieved? Like, are you yeah, married yeah. yet? Are you married yeah. yet? Yeah. Wow. No. Yeah. Are you engaged? No. Yeah. No, I'm not so engaged. So what's the point? Yeah. Have you made it's any business alliances? <laughs> you know? No. What have you achieved? Is that why you took your file of facts in case your I parents said was, the same thing? It, it was be. certainly if I if I met someone, yeah, then I could put their... Oh I mean, that, nothing is more awful. romantic yeah. than writing, giving a whole new entry for... No, that's steady. For a lady in your file of facts. I'll pencil you in. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. What about in those days when people used to say, well, you're too young to remember it, but people used to say if a man really fancied you, and presumably, I don't know if it happened with the other way around, but if a man really fancied you, he would remember your phone number. 
Oh, yeah. No. What about that? I remember you would my just first tell girlfriend's one. phone number. Do you? Yeah. Aww. Well, yeah. Remember, because I had to phone it from. I wasn't allowed a mobile phone. Yeah. So I had to phone it from pay phones. Yeah. And I remember I could still say it now. So there's that thing, the other extension, which obviously you don't have with mobile yeah. phones, yeah. where where your parents would pick up yeah. the yeah. phone and hear you going, "Oh, I love you. I love you. What? 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 Get off the phone. Get off the phone. Yeah. That's yeah. all my father ever said to me. But you just get off the phone. But they, yes, they would pick it up. And get go, off the phone. And, and I say, Dad, okay, I'm just going to say goodbye. I'm going to say, no, get off the phone now. But Dad, and also you had to wait till six o'clock to make any flipping phone calls in the first yes, place. Yes. Six oh, o'clock. Oh yeah, remember yeah. that? Because it got cheaper that. at six o'clock. Oh. I don't know why. And then get off the phone, get off the phone, get off the phone. We didn't have an extension. We just had the one phone, and um, so no mm. one could listen. My sister once went through my mum's address book and rang everyone in it and said she was from a radio station in Derby and they'd won a TV in a fridge, and they had to wait <laughs> in all day to see they mustn't go out, and it might even come as late as midnight. And then my, my mum found out and went mad. But if we'd had the extension, my mum would have been able to. What a bizarre! Why did she do evil that? Friend. She really loved like systems, and she really liked doing things thoroughly. So she said, "This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ring everyone, and I won't stop until I've done it." How many telephone numbers can you remember now? I know hundreds from when I was a kid. From but when I don't we, know yeah. any now. No. I don't even know my own children's phone numbers by heart now. No, but yeah. I know, but I remember my my late grandparents' numbers, and almost everyone I ever went out with, and everyone at school. Yeah, I, I remember um, people's phone numbers from when there was different dialing tone codes, like oh one eight one and all. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. nothing. Oh yeah, oh, excuse, me, excuse me, I remember, oh, excuse oh, me, excuse me, that's nothing. Do you remember? I know what you're going to you say. You know, he knows what I'm going to say. When it was letters, not numbers. Yeah, it's disgusting. Letters. So, for example, we um, our number was f- one three four, but before it was that, it was Hillside yeah. one one three four H I L one one three four. My grandparents Mount lived in View. Wilsdon in North London. W I L six eight two nine. So um, now half uh, about half of those codes. St- so with Matlock, the yeah. co- code is a one six two nine, and on the keypad six is M and two is A. Uh-huh. But some of them it doesn't work for. Maybe yeah. they're coded that are coming after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I love what that was yours? What did you say yours was? Uh, Mount View. Mount View, which is Crouch End. It yeah. was it was a uh, part of Crouch End. Yeah. So. so you mean instead of o one seven one, you died. Oh, but this is way. Oh, this is long before any of that. Oh, anything. Oh one, but. Only, yeah. <laughs> the number was just the number. My grandma's number. 0398. That's the number. No 01s, no so, 171s, no 0208s, none of that. But, if but yeah. it had an STA for Stanmore. STA. Yeah. And, and then the number. number. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the STA element. Yeah. 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 So, so they all had names. Three, They're four, rather poetic eight, names. Much better. Yeah. Mount, M O U. Yes. Uh, so uh, I, I worry that if I was to go to jail and you get one phone call, mm. the only number I really remember is like 999. That's pointless. <laughs> um, <laughs> or someone who's moved to New Zealand. So that's right. my old neighbour. Yeah. So I don't know who what you're going to do. Yeah. I do yeah. feel sorry for um, sometimes you, because there's been this sort of, in London anyway, it's gone from 01 to then it was 01. 71 and 81 and then it was 017 yes. and sometimes you see like vans yeah. or shop fronts key cutter shops where it's still it's just key cutter says, shops are still 01 yeah and, or, or, uh, or 0171 you just think business isn't going well <laughs> because you know you have, uh, can't afford to change it great thank you um, that's what I always say that that's my link so um, also this month uh, Freshers Week is upon us as all over the country students head up the motorway in cars loaded with duvets pot plants saucepans and their parents lost dreams of money for their retirement. Hashtag autobiographical. Do you remember Fresh as Well? I just thought we could do a little bit of advice for those uh, fresh. Anyone you're friendly with in the first few days, you never, ever are friendly with for the rest <laughs> yes. of the yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's almost like a rule that the people you first meet, you you're should just hate. say to them, oh, we know that we're not going to... Yeah. 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 Well, I didn't have really any friends for the first... My only friend at my first year of university was a guy that used to bring his books to lectures in a guitar case. <laughs> so I remember thinking, how could I have made more friends? I had this idea that if you want to make friends on Freshers' Week on the first day, wear a shirt that on the back says, like, here to help. So people think, oh, I'll go and talk to that guy. <laughs> and then I'll, they ask me a question, I'll just change the subject. Hey, so what music are you into? Or something like that. And then yeah. they go, oh, Adam's a cool guy. Right, well, good luck, all you freshers. And a message from our sponsor now. <laughs> well, Walkers have brought back the nation's favourite old flavours for a limited time. Uh, they've asked the public to vote to bring back just one flavour. You can vote online on the Walkers website or on the Walkers app. Well, that's all from the Snackdown for this month. Uh, I'd like to thank Vanessa Feltz, Izzy Sooty and Adam Hess and all also, Amanda Wilkie, Andrea Mann, Lucy Freeman and Andy Prendergast for their assists. Uh, we'll do a nice retro goodbye with Close Down and the National Anthem now. Drum roll, please be upstanding. <laughs> Never mind. Goodbye!